So graduates, congratulations. Um, and actually, when I hear the music, I still get tears in my eyes when you guys marched in. Uh, it was so cool, and it reminds me of graduations in the past and also of one traumatic experience that I had uh, when I was the county attorney, the DA, uh, for Hennepin County, and I got invited at the last minute to the White House, and this is when President Clinton was president. You guys were hardly born, I don't think, but your parents <laughs> will remember this. And I was to uh, introduce him at the last minute for some crime legislation that he was doing that I had been working on. And there I was, outside of the East Room, never having been in the White House before, and it's filled with cameras, it's filled with people, and they have the military band. And they start playing that hail to the cheek, you know, da 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 da. I need James up here, okay? <laughs> so I'm pretty nervous, and I'm standing out there, and I just start walking in, and all of a sudden I feel this big hand on my shoulder, and this voice says, I know you're going to do great out there, but when they play that song, I usually go first. <laughs> Education. Uh, my grandpa uh, was an iron ore miner uh, who had to quit school in sixth grade um, to work in the mines, support his nine brothers and sisters. I had a very dangerous time. My dad still remembers all of the caskets lined up in the Catholic Church um, nearly every week uh, when miners would be killed. And my grandpa did that his whole life. And he saved coffee can in the basement uh, so he could send my dad to college. And my mom taught second grade, here's for your teachers, until she was 70 years old. Um, and I literally uh, stand before you today as the granddaughter of an iron ore miner, the daughter of a teacher and a journalist, and the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Minnesota. And you are graduating from a great high school. Uh, the education that you've received at SSM is incredible. Uh, and as you all know, it's not just about academics, it's about faith, it's about service, it's about all of your uh, incredible extracurricular activities. The girls prep team won their third straight national hockey championship. That's pretty cool. You had 13 former students competing the, in the Olympics this year for four wow. different countries. That's <laughs> and I would say you are graduating from high school at a challenging and exciting time. Challenging because of the economic and international and political upheaval. Exciting because of the technological advancements, the endless career possibilities. Uh, and cures within reach. And as I look around me today, I have no doubt you're prepared for all of this. So too often, your generation, generation, I guess it's now not post-millennial, it's like Generation Z or something, right? Uh, you get a bad rap, and you've heard this as a millennial student too. So these are actual news headlines. These are not like made up news. Okay, I don't use the word fake news. These are made up, not, these are headlines that I found. CBS News says your generation is blamed for the vanishing bar of soap. <laughs> That's because you use liquid soap, okay? <laughs> the Economist asks in a headline, why isn't your generation buying diamonds? You're killing diamonds. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the cost of education right now, okay? The New York Post has my all-time favorite. Your generation has, quote, officially ruined brunch. <laughs> so I personally never make fun of your generation. Why? I have a 22-year-old that I really love, my daughter. I run an office that's chock full of Generation Z and millennials, and I know how much they want to make a difference. And in fact, studies have shown repeatedly in this class demonstrates that, that this generation is more diverse, more inclusive, and more globally minded than any generation that has come before it. This is for your parents and your grandparents. Studies have actually shown that your generation works hard, if not harder, than generations before you. So there we go. 
So when I look at these graduates, I don't worry about diamonds or brunch. Um, I know that our future is in good hands, and our future looks bright. So the one thing I wanted to focus on today, and then leave you to your incredible speakers and graduation ceremonies, is just the importance right now when people have gotten increasingly isolated and polarized in our world and in our country, to remember that you go forward as a team. And last year I actually heard, now this is going to be hard on Twins fans, but I heard the president of the Chicago Cubs, uh, Theo Epstein, and he told me his story. Um, it was about Game 7 of the 2016 World Series. And the Cubs were four outs away from their first World Series title in 108 years. And it was such a huge deal in Chicago that people literally took their radios and put them on the graves of their ancestors so they could hear the last game. <laughs> the cemetery were full of this. But what happened? Well, they blew a three-run lead, and the game was going into extra innings, and then the sky emptied out, and there was a rain delay. So during rain delays, and some of you athletes know this, or maybe when you're behind in a game, a lot of times players can just sit on a bench looking down, wallowing in what happened, and thinking about what they were doing and what they were going to do, engrossed in their own world. Well, game seven was different. Epstein stood outside of the locker room and he looked in, and he saw that the guy that had the very worst season, not a superstar, the worst season, a terrible year at bat, led the discussion. And they were not looking down that team. They were looking at each other. And they went back and forth and talked about what a cool year they had, what a great team they were, and that win or lose, they were going to go out there together. And they went out there, and they rallied, and they won. The message, some of us can go through our lives, and you guys are pretty young to hear this heavy-duty message, but if you remember one thing for me, remember this. You can go through your lives with your heads down, looking at your iPhones all the time, focused on ourselves, climbing the next rung of our own ladders. Others will go through our life with our heads up as part of something larger than ourselves. And that's something this school has taught you, this sense of purpose. Our veterans know this as we head into Memorial Day. The sense of being part of something larger than ourselves, where we put our collective interests in front of our own priorities. And that is what I truly hope you will do because your education has taught you to do this. The fact that you have people from other countries in your class teaches you that looking outside of yourself means not just even in your own community, not just in Faribault, not just in Minnesota, but really across the country and across the world. And that we see that getting to know people, working with people, doing business with people in other countries does not diminish who we are as Americans. It is what we are as Americans. As your classmate Audrey Hong wrote, the world outside the arch is large, diverse, and sometimes dangerous. But we need to grow up and live in it to make things better. So I'm going to end with one story because I began with my daughter and I'll end with her. And this happened when she was four years old and she was in the nativity play at our church. And she was to play the angel and she was wearing this big white angel costume with these huge white angel wings and she wouldn't go out and practice and I'm looking at her you gotta go out there and she says no I want to be the donkey <laughs> no, 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 no. Timmy and Joey are the donkey these two hot teenagers wearing this donkey costume I said no 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 you're the angel well then I want to be Mary and I said no Mary is 14 you are the angel. You have the coolest part in this whole thing. You get to go out at the end and spread your wings. And she looked at me. She goes, Mom, looks way up at the top of the church. I don't know how to tell them. I don't know how to fly. <laughs> and I said to her that day, you know what, honey? Not all angels fly. So you graduates, remember this. You are, in effect, because of this great education you've received, you are the guardian angels for people that you may not have met yet, right? And being an angel to other people means that maybe you choose to volunteer, maybe you choose to go into some career where you help people, whether it's in the public sector, the private sector, or in government. It may simply mean a kind word to someone when they need you the most. It may simply mean defending someone when they need defense. It may mean making a momentary decision 
that's all about being good. So that's what this is about. This is about being part of something bigger than yourself as you're going into the world, whether you're going to college, whether you're going to your next step, whether you're not even sure what you're going to do, that is what this is about. So you have a lot on your shoulders, but I know you're up for it. I know you can handle these heavy wings. So be bold, lead, and congratulations. You're ready to fly. Thank you.